Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Welcome to the Whiskey Ramp Podcast. It's a little crusty. It's frustrating. And it's going to be a little bit of a rant. I don't understand it. I don't know why. Some sort of injustice. Anyway, end rant. Hello and welcome back to the Two Luckiest Men in the World Podcast. I'm Jeremy. I'm Rob. And uh, yeah, so by the title, um, we have some of the oldest Scotch whiskey ever bottled in front of us right now the oldest scotch whiskey ever bottled let's rewind how did we get this where did we get this from so our boy james Bourne. yeah lovely gentleman very nice man um are we are we going like way back to like the beginning yeah i think we might as well start start? yeah (laughs) (laughs) well let's not go back to 1940 when this thing laid down but let's let's talk about how we were invited to this tasting which happened in vancouver recently so, James needed a bottle of Glenallachie 10 year old cast strength, the batch mm-hmm. five. It was stuck in shipments getting into Canada. He had a tasting coming up. Mm-hmm. He found out that I had a bottle. He asked me for it. I sent it to him. He was very grateful, sent me a gift. Thought everything was, like, you know. Kind whiskey of, people helping whiskey people. Right? It's, it's, that's why the community is so good. Yeah. Um, I thought it was over there, you know, like, helped him out. He was very gracious, Mm -hmm. sent me back a gift. I was very gracious for the gift. Didn't think it was necessary, but very grateful. Um, Fast forward like a month or a month and a half, and I get a message from James saying, I'm gonna need another favor from you. And I'm like, oh, okay, what's going on? And he's like, I'm gonna need you to book a plane ticket to Vancouver, because we're gonna be trying the Gordon McPhail 80-year-old Glenlivet. And basically, like, I almost dropped the phone in my hand, like, kitchen. My wife and kids were looking at me, <laughs> right. like, what's going on? Did somebody die? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I was just, like, shocked. Um, yeah. And, you know, and then he said that he'd be extending the invite to you as well. So I was, like, basically offer you can't refuse kind of thing. Uh, fully yeah. comped trip to Vancouver. Flight, hotel. Yeah. yeah. And we get to try... Basically, a once in a lifetime whiskey. Absolutely, yeah. I remember when you were like, uh, "Expect a call from James." I gave you, uh, gave him your number. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, uh, oh yeah, what? Well, okay, sure, whatever. Yeah. And so he calls me, and tells me the story, what's gonna happen, and I'm like, okay, yeah, this is this is a punk or <laughs> I uh, no, really, I was like. <laughs> I'm like, is this like make a wish foundation? Like, am I terminally ill? Like, you guys set this up, right? You were Rob called you. He's like, this is my buddy. Like, I got these results back from his family. He doesn't know yet, but he's we gotta do something special for him. Just complete disbelief. Complete disbelief. Yeah, you know, he's crazy. like, come up to Vancouver. You know, we'll play for your flight. We'll put you up. Come try this Gord McPhail, Glenn Levitt, eighty year old that we have got some samples of, and we'll do a dinner and. Um, it was just like, okay, sure. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to pull my arm that hard. Um, so yeah, both the flights and we went off there like a week ago. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It was just over a week ago. Yeah. Um, actually I, I just basically it's full week that I've been back in Toronto. Right. So yeah. Quick trip for you there and back. Yeah. Pretty much um, up there the Friday, back the Sunday night and then back to work. Um, Actually, I was like really tired and sick. So I actually, not sick, but so tired that I felt like garbage. So I stayed home yeah. the next day, but. Um, yeah, so if you follow us on Instagram or some of the other creators uh, in the whiskey world, uh, you've probably seen some pictures. Um, mm. so lots of documentation about this, but let's talk about like the tasting and like the dinner. So they take us to a restaurant um, yeah. called. Aqua Farina. Aqua Farina. Aqua farina. You have to say it because you're the Italian. Aqua farina, it just basically means uh, water and flour. So, like, the ingredients for pretty much 80% of Italian food. Right. Um, pasta, pizza, all that stuff. Right. So, like, Michelin star equivalent Italian restaurant. Yeah. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous place. Yeah. We should say that uh, Canada doesn't actually have any Michelin stars, but there's something to do with the grading. They don't come to Canada for some reason, but they think that if we did have a few, this would be one of them. Sure. This one. So. Um, 
And definitely lived up to it. Um, so beautiful spot. They take us upstairs to like the little mezzanine area, private dining area. Yeah. And, um, you know, we see everyone else that's coming to this, different creators, Instagram yeah. influencers. All cool people. Great people. Yeah. And we got to meet, you know, a whole bunch of awesome uh, people in the whiskey world. And everyone was just, you know, twiddling their fingers ready to go. Like, it was, yeah. the excitement and the buzz was just, like, you can, out of control. Yeah. like Right? We, we were so giddy. It was like kids at Christmas. It, it was insane. Honestly. Like, I, I, I drew a picture for one of my friends just basically said, like, Imagine my son who was like full of energy on like Christmas Day. Like, that's <laughs> essentially what I was. Like, I couldn't contain my excitement. I was, yeah, I mean, but the two of us, I mean, like, you know, who are we really to be trying this whiskey? We're super fortunate, grateful, um, blessed, and honored to, to be a part of this thing. Absolutely. And, uh, I think the cool thing about what James kind of wanted to do was like, you know, let's let's invite some people in the whiskey world that would really, really appreciate this experience. Yeah, and like I think you know, that's, like that's it. for sure we would. I mean, of course, of course, this is, this is blowing our minds. I love the way James did it because if you looked at like majority of the people that were there probably can't afford this bottle, like no, right, like of course not. yeah. Um, well, not yet. And we all we all kind of ask that question to ourselves, like, what am I doing here? Yeah. I think, right? like, and that was what was cool about what James did because he, he took guys that he knows, A, respects whiskey. Like, they, lo like, they mm -hmm. love whiskey. Uh, yeah. B, like, guys that he developed some sort of relationship with. So he, he trusted that them being there would, like, like you know, like, it would be a good showing. It wouldn't be, like, a debauchery or like guys would like, just be getting wasted and like sure. you know acting like clowns um <laughs> you know so it was it was just really cool the way he set it up yeah and, and honestly um little sidebar we were pretty like tight-lipped about this until we until the day of we didn't really want to like well one we didn't want to like <laughs> we wanted to make sure it was real yeah, <laughs> yeah we actually wanted to, like, we, yeah. we wanted to get to vancouver yeah. and like you know actually like be there uh, before we really got into like you know posting all over social that we're going to this thing it wasn't until the saturday morning that i had the courage to actually post something I'm like okay there's a yeah. good chance i'm not gonna die from now <laughs> until the right? actual tasting like jinx it so yeah you know what i'll post now because i feel like i'm gonna make it yeah but like up until that point i was like no I, I, i'm not doing it i'm not jinxing myself I barely told anybody I, I didn't post anything on social media i was very very nervous about like not being in that room yeah absolutely get arrested or something <laughs> right <laughs> you, you had to make sure it was like for sure real okay <laughs> guess what guys i'm going to try this thing <laughs> so we get to the restaurant um they take our phones yeah they take all of crazy. our phones so we don't have our phones uh during this whole experience which worked out for the best in my opinion for absolutely. sure um you didn't want 15 guys with their phone out for every single cocktail right. but glass of wine course that came out and whiskey that we drank that's all we would really be doing though right like we would just be trying to capture the moment but not living the moment exactly like yeah. whenever you're capturing the moment you sacrifice actually like being in the moment yeah right so like yeah so this was a policy that the restaurant had yeah not like gorbing fail or whatever not the tasting it was the restaurant's policy that's right um but definitely uh i thought it was a, the right call for us yeah. for that for this experience so we get up there uh immediately handed champagne yeah. um there's table seating cards so we're all have assigned seats um so we take our seats sit down shoot the shit a bit yeah. Um, the courses start coming out. The food is just unreal, bonkers, bonkers. unreal. And yeah. uh, we'll show a, a picture of, of the menu because a preset yeah. menu we'll um, with the tastings that were paired with different wines. So we had champagne, we had a red, we had a white, we had yeah. a cocktail, a whiskey cocktail. What did it have in it? Ben, <laughs> Ben, Ben Romick. Ben Romick 21, 21 was the base for the cocktail. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. Well, and then, I mean, compared to the other whiskeys that we had that night, I guess that would be like a bar play kind of whiskey yeah, yeah, right? for, for that kind of night, I guess. And the scotch that we were drinking during this dinner. Unbelievable. With some of their younger stuff, right? 30 yeah. and 40 years old. Yeah. 30 year old Glenn Levick, Gordon McPhail, uh, 40 year old Glenn Levick, Gordon McPhail. Yeah, and, and then, that was the joke that I think Richard was making. He's yeah. like, we're starting out with some younger whiskey here, younger guys. Whiskey, yeah. 30 year old. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, both of those are excellent as well. I absolutely loved the whiskeys, um, yeah. and we'll show some uh, pictures of what exactly we had. But so so good. Yeah, unbelievably yeah. good. Yeah, honestly, it couldn't have gone better. To be honest with you, I don't. I mean, there's no like. <laughs> yeah. there's, I don't think I could like. I have zero criticism of how the night went. It was like everything was awesome. planned perfectly. It was done yeah. the right way. Exactly. Um, and we'll talk about how we actually have still a sample of this. Yeah. But all the courses paired perfectly with the wines, with the champagne, with the whiskeys. The dinner was great. So then we get to the 80 year old, right? Yeah. And a really cool thing that they did is that they gave us like the sample bottle and was like, here, you know, pour as much or as little as you want and you right. can take some home with you. And we're just like, that's so awesome. I was blown away. So awesome. And honestly, this was actually another kind of like feather in the cap of the whiskey world. Um, our boy Brandon was there from, uh, from barrel to bottle mm -hmm. and there's three of them. And yeah. he was the one that drew like he got the, the straw to get to go. The long straw, yeah. yeah the long straw, I guess. <laughs> right. um, he got to go out of the three. Mm -hmm. So he poured himself like that much. Yeah, and he like left a the third. Other, yeah. yeah, and he left for the other two guys. Two thirds for yeah. the other two guys. Like I thought that was like such a cool thing. Like just little things like that throughout the night. It's like, wow, this is the community that we're a mm -hmm. part of. It was, it was honestly, it was a really cool event, man. Yeah, it was really, it was so, so well done. Um, so we're like, oh great, we can save some and like do a freaking podcast yeah, and absolutely. talk about it and try it again um, on a palate that isn't consumed with a six course meal and you know three scotches and two bottles of wine and then some champagne shockingly though somehow it held up it was fine it was great it was, didn't like yeah it was like oh no the palate's ruined it's not it wasn't yeah. really ruined i didn't at all. feel was, I, like there's nights where you drink a couple cash and whiskeys you're like okay pretty much anything i try after this mm -hmm. is gonna like be blank and i'm not gonna taste it yeah but this stood up to everything like, yeah and i was shocked and we'll talk about this cool little egg corn that they gave us as well. So this represents um, 80 years is oak in like the, what do you call that? It's like the marriage anniversary, yeah, the anniversary tradition, right? You have diamond, you have whatever. Gold, silver. Sure. Platinum. So 80, if you ever get married for 80 years, uh, is oak. Yeah. So they fashioned these cool little egg corns out of the staves of the yeah. cast that they pulled the whiskey from. I thought that was really, really cool. So we got a nice little touch. memento and they gave us a really cool box um, that fit that, the glass, yeah. the sample. Are we showing that up here? Or? We'll show it on the screen right now um, of exactly what that is. Really nice presentation with the box and everything. So we took that, that was at the very end. They gave us that to put everything in yeah. that we could take home. Got this little 80 Glencairn. Yeah, the Glencairn 80. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, I was thinking. Yeah, there you go, kind of. Well, they'll see it in the images. With the 80 up there. Um, cool little so, box. So, yeah, we poured ourselves a little bit of the whiskey, and I thought it was absolutely mind-blowing Yeah. nosing this thing. Yeah, it was crazy. It, I must have nosed it for almost, like, I feel like it was almost an hour. We spent six and a half hours at this restaurant. We got there at 6.30, and we closed it down at, like, 2, right? We were yeah. there for a very, very a long, long time. time. Long time. Yeah, it was a long night. And and we're technically at 5.30 because, like, well, I don't know. You slept a little better than I did, but, like, I, I was still stuck in Toronto time, so I'm waking we were, up. Like, uh, yeah, at that point, we were still in Toronto time. Yeah. So it was really, like, <laughs> yeah, 2.30 was 5 a.m., 5 a.m., 5.30 yeah. a.m. for us. So yeah, yeah, it was a late night, but 100% uh, well worth it. Oh, yeah. So I don't know what you expected with this whiskey. I didn't really know what to expect. I figured there, it would have some oak influence in it, yeah. but that was really it. I mean, the cool thing about this whiskey is it was laid down in 1940. At that time, Glenlivet peated their malt. Yeah. So peated malt here. Which, something that they don't do now. Which I wonder if that's what saved this whiskey from being like over oaked. Hmm. Is that it was a little peated. Interesting. Because like you kind of like lose that oakiness in like a, a peated whiskey i find sure like you'll get it a little bit more in just like a sherry cask or, or whatever right yeah. but i don't find that pick it up as much when there's although you don't really get peat on the nose here no you don't um matured in a sherry butt you do get the sherry yeah 
it's a lot. Honestly, that like I wish, I wish we could share because I don't think people will believe how fresh the sherry. Actually that was is. one thing that shocked me was yeah. how fresh and vibrant the whiskey was, and how the oak wasn't over oaked, in, in my opinion. Which makes me excited to find out um, what other expressions there are laid away in other. I mean, maybe we'll never get to try them, but probably. The, the likelihood of ever trying this was like one in a million, but mm-hmm. um, maybe less. The reason why he explained that he thinks, so uh, one of the owners of Gordon McPhail, Ben Ramak, was there doing the tasting with us, which was absolutely awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. Richard, really, yeah, really cool Richard guy. Richard was a great guy. Um, and he explained that the cask that they ended up aging this whiskey in was a sherry transport cask. Mm -hmm. So back when they were using old sherry, um, they would transport in these thicker oak casks, transport the sherry in the, in thicker oak casks. So like Mm -hmm. old sherry that was going to go get bottled somewhere. They pour it into these transport casks and these trans, these transport casks would have several like years of like transporting, before they were ever filled with a whiskey. Yep. So they're, they're transporting, transporting back and forth, really, back really and forth. quality sherry yeah. back and forth to like, like bottling and then from the bodegas um, containing this old sherry that was, that, cause back in the day they were only bottling old sherry because it wasn't, you know, it was in demand and, and but like, you know, they had a, a better supply of it. Anyway, long story short, this transport cask has a thicker, uh, like a thicker stave. So each of the staves obviously are a little mm-hmm. thicker, right. um, which is why he thinks it stood up. Like in the, in the like we're talking, it's still 44.9% at cast strength. Yeah, I should have mentioned that. Cast strength at 44.9. Right? I know that, I know of 30 year olds that are that low. Like the, um, the Anak 1975 that Mike and Narby actually recently reviewed. Uh, I reviewed that a few years back, like three years ago, and that was like about 44% cast strength. So that's only 39 years old, yeah. right? So um, long-winded way of saying that the thicker oak staves is what he believes saved this from evaporating too much, as well as losing uh, a lot of ABV at a time. Right. So on the nose, this thing is incredibly complex. So many layers. Um, the first thing that really kind of caught my eye with it is how much like tea-like qualities and notes I was getting out of this. I don't know if David's tea is something that they have worldwide. Yeah. If it is, this is what they, they look like. So David's tea has so many different varieties of tea. Yeah. And you walk into their store and smell some stuff and you get some of that in here. It's, yeah. it's insane. If David's tea is not a global thing, then think fancy hipster, um, like, like new, it's like, like blended age. teas yeah. meant to like create a profile, uh, exactly. very fruity, yeah. very like, um, aromatic. So much like David's tea, I would name this the, the black, so the strawberry black. You could, no, strawberry eucalyptus black tea. That's yeah. what I would name this. It's a very good descriptor. Cause it is, it's like, and I'm getting like mint and like there's a whole bunch of like herbal elements that come in with this as well. And of course you get like that aged sherry, that like old leather, the like um, dusty antique yeah. store kind of like vibe to it. Yeah, this screams like old library. Old library, right? for sure. Yeah, absolutely it does. And so, just, like, there's so yeah. many layers. It's hard to describe it. Um, there's so much stuff going on with it. Old library, a little bit of like wood varnish, polish, something like that. Yeah. Right. Like something like like um, almost like those like uh, what's it called like lemon pine salt. I guess it is. Is it lemon pine salt mm-hmm. that like you clean like yeah. wood tables with? But like from a distance, not like. Not potent by any means, right. like not stinging your nostrils or anything like that. It's just that kind of like distant, like... <laughs> Cue the Family Guy uh, lemon pledge clip here. We need more lemon pledge. Lemon pledge, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, 
what the fresh part is that like where that's, those strawberries come in for me. It's incredibly vibrant. Like you wouldn't think on 80 years you'd get this much vibrancy from the cast, but it's it's insane. There's something else fruity in there that I wasn't able to like peg. There's lots of berry fruit, but it's hard to, yeah, you're right. It's hard to exactly, there's, there's notes in here that I've never experienced before in a whiskey. You know, like, what's it taste like? Like, what's something you could, could you name another whiskey that this is like? I don't think you could. No. 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 Not it's whiskey. Like, it's like nothing you've had before. There is, like, a little bit of, like, a distant, like, rum cake kind of note. Something like, like pastry in there? Yeah. Like, something even, like, uh. Christmas fruitcake kind of note. Yeah, maybe like a little like frosting. But not like an up close or like you just took a bite out of. Very distant. Everything in here is subtle. Yeah. Um, it seems like there's nothing really overwhelming. No heat whatsoever. Zero percent. It almost smells like you're... You know when you leave a really well-aged whiskey glass unwashed on your sink? Like the next like morning. The next morning. Yeah. It almost has that kind of smell to it. Yeah. You know? Like. It's almost got like some barrel char influence as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that's, I think that's maybe where the oak comes in. Like she is 80 years old, right? So. Yeah. We haven't taken a sip yet. I mean, you don't need to take a sip of this. You can just smell this he knows forever. It forever. Yeah, yeah. He knows it forever. Absolutely. All right, so should we uh, taste this bad boy or what? You have a, you have a, you ha you go first. I go first. <laughs> it was like when we were at the dinner and no one was like, okay, who's gonna sip it first? Yeah. Who's gonna go first? Yeah, I think actually, I was one of the first ones because like, I couldn't take it anymore. I just could not take it. I couldn't take people <laughs> talking about notes and shit. I'm like, I just gotta drink this yeah. thing. I was, I think I was one of the last that day, but I'll be the first to say. I think I took a sip and I don't think I swallowed for like, <laughs> Two and a half minutes. It seemed like forever. I just kept it in <laughs> and just tried to like analyze exactly what I was getting. Um, but so much going on with this whiskey. Like it's just, it's crazy to think about um, something this old and what you get from it. I just don't think people will believe how good this actually is. Like I, I rem like. That moment just now, it was like, yeah, I remember this. Like, wow. That that was a wow experience then and just a wow experience mm. right now. All those notes, like we, we talked about on the nose, like that strawberry eucalyptus black tea, it's there, but it's not so eucalyptus on the palate. It's more strawberry black tea. And yeah. then it's, it's like a nice, like, I want to call it, like a tobacco-y kind of note on the finish, um, mm -hmm. but like a good tobacco, like a really good tobacco, almost like the tobacco note that you would get from like an, a good espresso or something like that. Yeah, I get, I the tobacco note that comes to mind for me is like pipe tobacco. Yeah. It's like the leaf, unburnt leaf pipe, mm -hmm. like kind of le leafy pipe tobacco. Yeah. Um, the finish on this is hugely impactful. Mm -hmm. It's very, very bold. I'm still tasting it. You want to suck your cheeks off because you <laughs> the finish lasts for so long, right? You just like, and you it's, keep trying to squeeze everything out. Yeah, and like you still, would expect it to be drying. It's right? not. It's not at all. It's not drying, which is crazy to me. It's, like that yeah, makes how it no keeps sense. its vibrancy throughout the palate and the finish. I think it speaks to how good this is. I don't get it. Like I don't. I don't. I mean. We're not talking price yet, but for the price, at least you know if you bought this bottle to drink and you have that kind of money to throw around, then you're gonna experience something you will never experience in any yeah, other way. Yeah, sure. You're not you're not buying like a dusty, dry right. over oat whiskey. Yeah, like no, it's not fair to say. Is this the best whiskey you ever had? I don't know. I, I like I need I need a lot of time with a whiskey to know that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And like giving something like this a mark is really hard as well. We'll try maybe, but. Mm -hmm. It's really hard, right? Um, but are you ever gonna taste anything like this again? I don't think so. This is insanely good. Yeah, it's really I have, good. It's like dude. trying it for another time, like tonight, it just makes you appreciate, I think, even more. Absolutely, if anything, way more, because that night 
we were revved up. We were expecting good things. Mm -hmm. We were, you know, like the mood was great. The atmosphere was great. Everything yeah. was great. But now you take this, like, to the basement. Right. Right. Yeah. And, no and, other distractions around. Right. right. Just, just you and the whiskey. And all the same things. Like I, I remember, like having to close my eyes in that moment when we were drinking it at the restaurant that night. And just now, I felt that same sensation. Like, I gotta close my eyes. Like, yeah. this is unbelievable. Yeah. Like, I, I wanna, like, I don't know how to ingrain this. Thank God this is on video. This is why I kinda started with Skin the Six because there were so many moments that I was like, man, I don't wanna forget this. Mm -hmm. How do I capture this? And, like, you don't have your friends around, like, especially in the beginning, when you're just getting into whiskey, you don't have your friends to share it with all the time. Probably most of the time, right? right. Um, and that's that's why I started whiskey and six because I like I would be like the first thing I would do is pick up my phone, text one of my friends that I know likes whiskey, and they, oh right. my god, you got to try this! Like it's so good. Yeah. I'm like, I should like try to record this experience. Thank God we were able to take back half an ounce and do an actual proper review on this because. I love that they thought that through. That was one yeah. of the like the highlights to yeah. me. It's just like, oh, you I was guys thought of that. That's so cool that we can do that. Honestly, I did really, not really expect cool. it because like I thought that they're gonna, they were less. Um, what's the word? I guess like. You go to some whiskey tastings, and I don't want to call the word stingy. It's not stingy, but like, they're they're way more controlling about the situation with. We're talking like a hundred dollar bottle or a two hundred dollar bottle or maybe a five hundred dollar bottle, mm -hmm. right? This bottle is a it the MSRP on this bottle Canadian is one hundred and forty thousand yeah. dollars. It's already sold for. Well, I don't know. We'll get into that when we talk yeah. about the secondary market. But uh, a cool thing, I guess, what they did when they tried to price this, they're like, let's do a thousand pounds per year. Yeah. So like, we're gonna sell this thing for. 80,000 pounds, and it's gonna be 80,000 pounds wherever it's sold at yeah. retail, yeah. Uh, whatever market you're in. And I thought that was kind of cool. I think that was cool. And too. we'll talk about secondary, because it goes for obviously way more in secondary, um, but we'll get to that. One really cool conversation I think we had that night um, at our table is we kind of went around and was like, you know, what's your best whiskey experience? Mm -hmm. And not necessarily like, what's your favorite whiskey you've ever tried, but like, what's the experience you've had before? that really like reminds you and a lot of people like went back to just you know tasting a whiskey that's not like you know the craziest whiskey or the right. rarest whiskey or the oldest whiskey yeah. whereas like here you're with and like those experiences and yeah. that's what it, everyone talks about and how like they love whiskey because it's the sharing right exactly so everyone kind of told a story about that and i thought that was really cool mm -hmm. um i did name drop the brewer 38 but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but really like for me it was like you know drinking at a cottage with my buddies or whatever like yeah. those are the times that like you remember the most obviously this tasting we'll, we'll never forget that no yeah for sure i mean it's that's the funny thing about this hobby is that it can be a super lonely hobby if you know like you don't have a lot of people that you can share the experience with and it's not the same it, it's like i don't know I, I'm, I'm trying to think of like the exact comparison and there really isn't there really isn't one like it's it's hard that's why like the online community is so good the youtube community is so good it's like you can go to that live show and you can experience a tasting with someone yeah um but yeah i mean there's nothing like doing it in person with people that are just as passionate as you are yeah i think that's really like a special thing that you find with little you know niche things there doesn't if it's whiskey or whatever else mm -hmm. um people that are passionate like you are it's it's exciting and it's fun absolutely the longer this stays like open or like poured the sweeter it gets on the nose i was gonna say i was getting some sweetness some like licorice aspect to it yeah um it's <laughs> it's crazy and how well balanced everything is too something like i want to call it like an oak syrup i know there's like a maple syrup but there's like an oak syrup interesting I mean, if you had a full bottle of this and you could try it multiple times on multiple days, you would have a laundry list of tasting notes. Yeah, it would, they would go a mile long. It would change every single time you go back to that bottle. Right? Yeah. It would have to because, I mean, single casks in general open up ridiculous amounts. Now we're talking, 
a single cask that was in the barrel for 80 years. Like, that's insane. This, this barrel saw World War II. Yeah. Insane. Right. Like, yeah, it was... <laughs> where war spot, not it was, far from where this was laying. Yeah. Right? What was, what was Scotland's involvement in World War II? I think they were just, I don't know, just their English that. ally, right? Yeah, yeah, like, I would assume so. British ally? This is insane. It's so good. And that's like something too that like you were so happy about or I was. It's like, oh my God, this is like an amazing, an amazing whiskey. Yeah. Like it would have really sucked if, if we went there and like choking it down and it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's <this is> really good. <laughs> How bad would that have been? Like, yeah. What do you do in that situation? You're talking like, this is... Okay, can we talk price a little bit here? Let's talk price in a second. I just wanted to add one more thing about when Richard was talking about this, about this cask. And they tried it at 70 years. And they were like, nah, not good enough yet. We gotta let this thing go another decade. But like, how hilarious is that when you pull a cask at 70 and you're like, it's not ready? <laughs> I think I made a joke to someone that night. I'm like, imagine you're like an 80 year old groundskeeper at the time and you're like waiting for this cask. That cask to come out you're like yeah <laughs> it started you started there when you were 10 years old and it was late the same year <laughs> and it's finally like you know 70 years old and they're like okay maybe it's ready now and yeah they're gonna totally do it for 70 <laughs> you got these two young bucks running the show now and they're like nah we're gonna wait another yeah, 10 years a decade more on this cask <laughs> Poor Walter. Hilarious, right? <laughs> but it's interesting because, like, obviously it can't dip below 40%, and they're obviously, like, looking at this every single year or maybe sure. multiple times a year just to make sure. Yeah. Because that would be the worst thing ever when it goes to 39.9, and you're like, uh, what do we do now? I feel like almost any other distillery would have, this would have been underproof stuff. Yeah. This would have been underproof stuff that was poured into a blend that, like, you know, yeah, like an or some special blend. edition or something yeah. that like, we put it in the end. Right? You yeah. use this one cask that's now 35% or 36% <laughs> in, you know, a uh, special release 30-year-old and charge right. $10,000 a bottle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, you want to talk price? Yeah. So, so like we, we said, a 1,000 pounds per year is retail. Right. Yeah. So... I know of a store in Alberta that's selling it for $140,000. Canadian dollars? Canadian dollars. Yeah. So 140, but we do know of an, uh, like a charity auction and Richard spoke to it that night that it went for 190,000 American. 193,000 US dollars was what yeah. it sold for um, at Hong Kong, Hong Kong auction. Okay. Whiskey auction, one sold for a hundred and forty thousand pounds. Hundred forty thousand, which is so that's about one hundred eighty-five thousand U.S. Yeah, I think the translation was like, uh, or for Canadian dollars, it was like two hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars. Yeah. So, so th this uh, half ounce, which we're sipping on right now, is what for forty-five hundred dollars, four thousand dollars. Based on that. those numbers, based on those numbers, is it a seven hundred milliliter bottle? Yeah. 700 I, milliliters? That, yeah, I think so. So if it's a 700 milliliter bottle, it's probably what, like 24 ounces? Do some quick math. Uh, just do a quick little run of the numbers here. Let's go based on the 230,000 number mm -hmm. uh, divided by 24. So my previous calculation was wrong. Um, well, no, it could have been right. It was like 8,000 US. Announced. Uh, announced. This is yeah. this works out to nine nine thousand five hundred dollars an ounce Canadian. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> so almost ten thousand dollars an ounce. Yeah. Right. So you know almost the so our half ounce that we drank tonight is almost five thousand dollars worth of whiskey. Yeah, we just right? drank five thousand dollars worth of whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. Like it ain't no thing. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. We just blinked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happened. Uh, yeah. So um, do you want to try to score this whiskey? My God, I don't even know where to begin. Like, you, at some point you have to factor in authenticity and like, and like rare experience to it too, right? Uh huh. I would think. Yeah. You done yours? No. Almost. I don't know. I'm I'm in the mid nineties. I'm in like. I 
think this is as good as anything I've ever tried, mm-hmm. right? I think I, I, and what I mean by that is as good as the best things I've ever tried. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we're talking like, you know, that like really special um, spring bank that Mike and Narby sent to us. That mm-hmm. that Gordon McPhail, uh, Mortlock, 31-year-old that I bought back in the day. Yeah. The Brewer, 38-year-old that we tried together. The, uh-huh. the Brewer, 35-year-old that we tried together. The Brewer, 30-year-old, which we tried together. The Brewer, 30-year-old that we tried. Uh, yeah. That Kurosawa. Kurosawa is up there for me. unbelievable as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've had some ridiculous grandeurs and some ridiculous family casks as well. Um, this is there. This is with all of those. It's a different experience. It's... It's something that I absolutely loved. I, I think I have to give this a 95, and I mean, I know that's super generous, but it probably would be higher if we had a full bottle and we can like go back to it regularly. Like, mm, I feel like yeah. it's almost not fair to mark this, you know? For me, um, I agree with everything that you just said, and I would echo those thoughts exactly. Um, the highest score I've ever given on my channel has been 95, and that was for the Barora 38 year old. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that Kurosawa we tried is right up there, if not maybe like a half tick more mm-hmm. than that. Um, so for me, I'm right with you with 95. I think this tie is my highest score ever. And I think it's because of the complexity, because of the viscosity, the vibrancy, like how this sits on your palate and how it finishes is insane. It's like, it's crazy. And I'm not even including the experience that we had with this in the whiskey. This is just the whiskey itself. Yeah. Like if we try this blind, that's what I would say about it. Yeah. Um, you factor in, you know, this this flight, dinner, tasting, the company that we shared it with. I mean, it's 100 out of 100. There's nothing. Are we going to get a better whiskey experience in our life? I don't think we can. Like, how do you top that? I don't think so. I Unless mean, they do it for the 100th and then somehow, like, yeah. they're like, well, two people got really sick. Can you guys, like, fill in last <laughs> yeah, second? Imagine. Right? And, yeah, I mean, I don't see a better experience coming. I mean, it was a one of a kind thing, and we Absolutely. had the time of our lives there. Yeah, I mean, a whiskey experience that could not be traded. Like yeah. you know, it it was incredible. Um, I mean, I almost think it's like blasphemy marking something like this. Like mm-hmm. you almost just gotta kind of just respect it, and 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 it is what it is. Like that was a half ounce, but it took us a long time to drink. It's so hard not to drink it fast, right? though. I just want to down the I know, whole thing. Of course, because it's easy to drink and it's delicious, Man, and there's like it's so good. Um, I almost think, like, like, like we said, our scores are are ninety five each, but with room to improve, like. You yeah. know, and we'll never get that chance. <laughs> Let's talk value on this. Is this? <laughs> we usually drink a, a you know what we consider a value whiskey. Obviously, something that retails for 80,000 yeah. pounds can never be valued. But, I mean, we don't, we don't drink enough stuff to know if this is value. This could be a good value purchase. So, put it this way. It's not a guy like you or I. Okay, I'll speak for myself. It's not a guy like me that's buying this bottle and drinking it. Right. I can't. Like, no. there's no way I can. I'm not, like, I'm not mortgaging my house sure. just to buy a bottle. No. And then, you know, um, the guys that are buying this bottle, it's a drop in the bucket, just like a $200 bottle would be for us. You know if you I mean? can like, get it at retail, it's a good investment because you're going to make, you know, more than half your money back instantly. Yeah. Um, but let's just say, let's just throw it out there. How, like, these old McCallums go for at auction, stuff like that. Would you say that something like this, even at secondary market price, at uh, you know around two hundred thousand U.S. dollars, compares to something that's a Macallan that's a million dollars? So those Macallans, they're usually bottled at cast rank. The older ones that are are uh, single casks and stuff like that. I've never tried one. I've never even tried a single cask Macallan, so I, I can't speak to those. What I why I will say this is worth the price tag is whoever is buying this, if they decide to drink it the money's not hurting them, Mm -hmm. right? It's, like I said, it's a a once-in-a-lifetime whiskey experience, and if you can afford $200,000 and it doesn't hurt you, 
financially, then and you're willing to open that bottle, yeah. then you're going to enjoy it. You're going to get a whiskey that you've ne- you'll never get to experience in your life. Yeah. Um, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. For, for a whiskey that's the oldest scotch ever bottled, ever, to mm-hmm. this point in time, yeah. it doesn't seem like it's out of the realm of numbers as far as what you're seeing other bottles go for in secondary market auctions. No. And this will... Like, if you decide to buy two, if you're lucky enough to get two of them, like, do the rob, um, then the second one that you buy is going to be worth probably, like, a million bucks in, what, five, ten years? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, I think it's worth buying, personally. Obviously, I don't think a, tw- I don't think a $200 bottle is worth buying if it's going to hurt you. If yeah. it's going to financially get in the way of you feeding your ki- your children and and uh, paying your bills, then you shouldn't be buying a $200 bottle. Just like, obviously, a $200,000 bottle, you shouldn't be buying if it's going to financially hurt you. And it's not the the, the person that's going to be financially hurt by it that will buy this, you know what I mean? So I think it's worth every penny, to be honest with you. Yeah, and I think that the people that do buy it, and if they do decide to open it, they're not going to be disappointed with the liquid inside. No, exactly. And that's the the key, right? A lot of people that are buying this, it's a museum piece, it's going to go in there. I know... The belief is that a lot of people are buying this to drink because they're so curious to see like what an 80 year old whiskey will taste like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I have a hard time believing that. I have a hard time believing that like more than 60, more than 30% of these bottles will be open. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just, I don't see it happening. Yeah. So it's too easy to collect. Yeah. Right. And the bottle, uh, try the bottle back there and the uh, kind of case whiskey cage that came in that was designed by an architect really cool yeah they kind of went more of like a simplistic style with it Mm -hmm. which i thought was really kind of cool it wasn't like a big you know exorbitant uh decanter it was kind of like more kind of simple yeah um i guess you can look up the designed uh, process and and what was going through the architect's head when they did that but i thought it was really cool yeah the giant cologne bottle yeah essentially that's what it is right Yeah. yeah It's really, honestly, it's a, I think it's a beautiful bottle. It, it was a beautiful bottle and very heavy. The, the decanter itself will probably be worth a good portion of money if the guy that buys it decides to drink it. Mm-hmm. I think that decanter will be worth a lot of money. Plus, it'll be a cool, like, uh, infinity bottle. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Like, if you're, if you're a suit and you have that in your office after right. it's finished, you just keep refilling it with high-quality stuff. Yeah. Why not? Cotton candy on the... Uh, empty glass on the empty glass my goodness man yeah Um, just crazy insane lots of oak syrup absolutely uh, insane oak uh, syrup the new thing that you just coined oak syrup (laughs) on the empty glass (laughs) um so yeah i mean our minds are blown yeah thanks james yeah james and richard and everyone else that had a hand in putting that song and every single person that we shared the experience with at that restaurant um thank you for making it awesome Absolutely. Uh, where do we go from here? It's all downhill, right? We're done. Yes. We're done. Yeah, we're ra- it's a, that's a wrap. <laughs> we got to start our own whiskey distillery now. Shit, man. <laughs> um, well, I don't know what to say. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, right? I'm just really appreciative. Um, I mean, who would have known when we started our channels and started our journey that we would have been able to try something like this? That's. I mean, we can, I personally can't afford to buy a ten thousand dollar bottle let alone a ten thousand dollar ounce of whiskey you know what i mean like yeah so um pretty yeah. cool yeah well thank you so much again and uh thanks so much for watching uh, i don't know leave us a comment i guess yeah um we gotta get some whiskey rant merch oh you keep saying that and I, you leave it on me and i keep yeah. putting it off yeah you're, you're the guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm the most like yeah i can't it won't work if i if i have to do it, it won't work, so uh, if you want to get this podcast early, you want to support our channels, check out our Patreons. You can get this a uh, dollar a month. We'll get you this podcast early, earlier than uh, than everyone else. Yep. So check it out. And uh, yeah, we appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much. Uh, and we'll see you next time, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.